much. And uh, Warren Buffett has called this Israeli metalworking uh, company Iskar one of the best run in the world. And he spent $4 billion three years ago for a controlling stake. Now the chairman and founder of Iskar, Eitan Wertheimer, has become a Buffett insider, bringing the billionaire investor on a trip through Europe last year, as you recall. And now Eitan travels here to our studios. And it's great to see you again after the uh, annual meeting, Eitan. And I understand that you actually just met with Warren Buffett. Uh, any yeah, any just, highlights there? We just had a schnitzel on uh, <laughs> Tuesday in Omaha. Uh, it's, a, it's a love story. I mean, after three and a half years, it's like uh, the first day and uh, I see Warren as a teacher. Mm -hmm. And I said already before, of how do you balance between your heart, your pocket and your mind? And uh, how do you put values and wealth together in a sensible way to make a better world? But do you find that Warren is asking more questions, though, now from uh, not only you, but other, chair but other Berkshire chairmen and CEOs because of this financial crisis, that he wants to keep a closer tap at all on some of the companies, or no? Warren is the same Warren that uh, was before, the same Warren like today. And uh, it's a pure joy and pure uh, joy of intellect to talk about things. Uh, we also talked about uh, a lot about the world going back to basic. I also talked about the issue of, uh, and with him about the issue of philanthropy, mm -hmm. that more people uh, have to do more things. And the fact that uh, I not, do not intend to be the richest guy in the cemetery or things of this nature. And uh, what, what can we do more? Uh, the time calls for uh, redoing things. And, uh, you know, when the wind changes direction, some people will build walls and some people will build windmills. Right. And we like to build windmills. And, and you actually mentioned to me at the annual meeting earlier this year was that one of the things that you found in this financial crisis is that uh, you see your limitations as well in terms of, you know, as a company uh, you, were, you were acquiring last year. Uh, for instance, are you still looking at acquisitions? Are you finding that it's better to just sit back, hold off and wait until you see how the new world looks? For us to look for what we can buy is like going to the hair, the barber asking if you need a haircut. Of course, he'll tell you, come in, have a haircut. Of course, we're looking <laughs> for more purchases and more things. We do celebrate our limitation and definitely pay attention to what we can do and what we should not do and understand what, what areas. But uh, what we uh, were able to uh, buy and to join together with the Japanese wonderful group of uh, Tangaloi, uh, it's going to be a hell of a nice celebration. And uh, I hope uh, in a year from now to bring Warren over. I was talking with him about it. Oh, really? To bring Warren Buffett yeah. over to Japan? Yeah, yeah, so he hasn't met with anybody at Tungaloy yet? No, not yet. Not yet. And uh, when we have the next opening of the next elements there, and uh, like we did in China, like we did in Korea, like we did in other places, and uh, I think that we are, we, we are very proud to work with Warren, and uh, we'd make a serious effort to make him proud of... Uh, being part of his group. So if I'm, if I'm to understand, could this be yet another investment trip for him then? Aside from visiting Tungaloy, are you planning on perhaps introducing him to some people in China or other parts of Asia to look for investments there? Listen, I, my specialty lies in the very two very specific areas. One is cutting tool industry and the other area is the aerospace engine parts, which I'm partner with Pratt & Whitney and Royce Rush in this area. Uh, so I cannot comment anything about what Warren would or would not, not like to do in other places. Uh, we did have a wonderful tour in Europe uh, trying to see the entrepreneurs and the clever people of, uh, in the business, the new ones in Europe. Mm -hmm. And uh, every time we go, we meet a lot of interesting people. What comes out is a second story. The lady that uh, makes the suit, Miss Madame Lee, in, uh, in Dalian, it was almost an accident how we met her. And, uh, you mean the one who makes the suits for Warren Buffett? As I saw, actually, when I interviewed with him, he showed me, and she actually spelled his name wrong. But, it was, uh, but there are great suits, though, for him. It's a great story. It's yeah. a lady that started with uh, herself, and today has 14,000 people making some of the best suits in the world. Right. Okay, Eitan, just hang on, because we're going to be back with you to talk a bit more about what you see in this economy, uh, sort of you know, sure. your outlook for the global economy. And also, I want to get your take on how the dollar has affected your business, because as you know, it's been, it's been pretty much in a free fall since February. So how does that affect uh, is, uh, Iskar's international business? We're going to be back with Eitan Wertheimer. Uh, he's the chairman of Iskar. And also, we're going to give you an update on uh, General Motors. Again, the chancellor in Germany is going to be speaking any moment now to discuss the deal with Op Opel and uh, Magna. Keep it here. Okay, we are back with Eitan Wertheimer, who is the chairman of ISCAR. And uh, Eitan, as you know, we met, of course, at the annual meeting. I just want to play for our viewers uh, a portion of our interview at the time when you were talking about the world economy. Let's roll that. 
everywhere there is something clever, we'll be there. But meanwhile, we definitely are working very hard to prepare ourselves for a different world mm -hmm. because the world has changed. Right. And uh, we have to try to see if the world emerging later will be similar, will be different, in what way. The world is going to basic. We made a very important decision to try to keep all the people that we have, right. but to reduce any unnecessary cost around it. And are you going to continue to cost cut though? Or? We are reducing working times, overtime, all kind of okay. expenses if we don't really need them, we can live without them. And you're still looking at those options. I, I was reading reports about cost cutting, but the larger picture though is the world economy. Three months later, how has it changed for you? First of all, whatever I was hoping or talking about in Omaha happened. Hmm. We didn't lose people. We were able to stick to them. We did reduce down to four working days. Right, four we're day back, work week. Yeah. We now just in September, we are back to the five days now. And uh, we're keeping a very high cash flow. And we went to do cost structure to the break even point, not to the regular expenses just. Hmm. A lot of companies just are cutting on the surface. We wanted to go to the basic and do it right. So company is very healthy, very he also ready for the next uh, whatever come. Right. The next element. Does that mean that you're not going to lay off any staff then? Not even dream about. Okay. You see, 90% of our asset, assets go home at night and hopefully they come in the morning back. It's the people. My job in ISCO is to go around and take my hat off. I mean, this is my major job around there. So how can I afford not to have people to take my hat before? Mm -hmm. The other thing is that uh, we are back to basic. Okay, um, Eitan, sorry, I'm just going to hang on here because we are getting some headlines right now from German Chancellor Angela Merkel uh, saying that indeed GM has agreed to sell Opel to Magna, which is a Canadian car parts company. And uh, there she is talking right now. Let's listen in. Ich habe mit dem Betriebsratsvorsitzenden oh. Herrn Franz. Okay, nope. We're just going to, she's just speaking right now. We're going to continue to monitor that press conference. So, again, uh, Angela Merkel uh, confirming that GM has agreed to sell uh, Opel to Magna. So, of course, uh, uh, that is, again, an international story, which you are very involved in, Eitan. Uh, so, getting beyond, though, your company in particular, the world economy, what you're seeing, in terms of demand, in terms of the dollar? I mean, tell us how all of that is factoring into how you see the world economy shaping up after this crisis. First of all, people are, are not anymore in fear. People, the problem is there, they recognize it's there. And the old story was that people to overcome the fear normally had to invent a new fear. So nobody's wanting to invent another one. They are, understand where they are. And I see that people are now relaxed and starting to see, okay, what do we do? Uh, a lot of people went to basic, like we are doing back to basic. Mm -hmm. And what I can see in the two industries that I'm involved, the aerospace uh, engine side and the cutting tool area, uh, it's starting little, little, little going up. It's the okay. first time I see it in the last So months. you're starting to see demand come up then? Tiny weeny. Okay. Again, this is after uh, much less sales. That's a big drop, but it's starting, it's starting to move now. The first time I see it from the Korea side to China to Europe to Brazil, because we really are everywhere around Right, the world. I was going to say, I me, mean, are you seeing it regionally? Because you said before that this recession is totally different than past recessions that you've seen, where it's not on a regional basis, it's across no, all the industries, it's everywhere, right? Everywhere, everywhere. And uh, you see this thing coming. You see uh, country by country a little more, a little less. But the first time we see the, the thing is starting to come back. Again, it's a modest. I'm not sure every bird will uh, bring spring, but uh, it looks like there are more birds coming and spring will come soon. It's going to be slow. There's a lot of uh, people that are not, don't have a job, a lot of uh, things that are not being sold or too much inventory of this. But uh, things are starting to come, and I talk about really to, out of 62 countries uh, picture mm -hmm. and in, in certain industries. And Eitan, I just want to circle back in the time that we have sure. um, with Warren Buffett, because talking with him, uh, what are you learning from him in terms of how to deal with this crisis? I think the biggest lesson, uh, if you sleep on the floor, you're not going to fall off the bed. Stay <laughs> modest. Stay the basic. Stay in the basic. Uh, be okay. open for learning. Remember that learning belongs to the future, knowledge to the past. Right. And remember that the world is changing faster okay. and faster and faster. Eitan, we're run out of time, but thank you so thank much you. for joining me here. Eitan Wertheimer, Chairman of ISCAR.